after Elijah called down fire from heaven and consumed his sacrifice on Mount Carmel, he said it was going to rain. He told Ahab to get in his chariot and ride towards home. Je Jezreel is just in front of us, and behind us is the valley. We're going to talk to you today about Naboth's vineyard that Ahab desired to have and how he got it. 1 Kings chapter 21. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. Jezreel is right in front of us. And it says, And so Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near to next to my house, and for it I will give you a vineyard better than it, or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, the, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. So Ahab went into his house, sullen and displeased, because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would not eat. But Jezebel his wife came to him and said to him, Why is your spirit so sullen and you ate no food? He said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. Then Jezebel his wife said to him, You now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. And she wrote letters in Nahab's name, sealed them with his seal, sent his letters to the elders and to the nobles that were dwelling in the city with Naboth. She wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast and seat Naboth with high honor among the people and seat two men scoundrels before him to bear witness against him, saying, You have blasphemed God, for you and the king. Then take him out and stone him that he may die. So the men of the city, the elders and the nobles, who were inhabitants of his city, did as Jezebel had sent to them, as it was written in the letters which he had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast, seated Naboth with the high honor among the people, and two men who were scoundrels came in and sat before him. And the scoundrels witnessed against him, against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. Then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones so that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive, but is dead. So it was. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab got up and went down to take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down, meet Ahab, the king of Israel, who lives in Samaria, there he is in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone down to take possession of it. You shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Have you murdered and also taken possession? Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, dogs will lick up your blood, even yours. So Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found you because you have sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring calamity on you. I will take away your posterity and will cut off from Ahab every male in Israel, both bond and free. I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah, because the provocation with which you have provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And concerning Jezebel, the Lord also spoke, saying, 
The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of, Je wall of Jezebel. The dog shall eat whoever belongs to Ahab and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord, because Jezebel his wife stirred him up. And he behaved very abominably in the following idols, according to all that the Amorites had done, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. So it was when Ahab heard these words that he tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his body, and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went about mourning. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, See how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the calamity in his days. In the days of his sons, I will bring the calamity upon his house. And later on, Ahab meets his judgment. And now, here is Ari to explain the place we are standing in and tell us about Ahab and Naboth. Yeah, so welcome to the, again, Jezreel Valley, but welcome to a very certain place. Just above us here is Tel Jezreel. Tel Jezreel was the palace of Ahab and his wife Jezebel. When I say the palace, I mean one of the palace, because actually we had two palaces. One is Samaria. This was very good for summertime, but this palace was good for wintertime. When it was very cold, rainy, there is no other place better than here. It's still warm, it's still calm. And look what was the problem. His veranda was around where we are standing. And whenever he was standing in his veranda, looking down to all the field under his palace, everything was so beautiful. But it was one problem. Where we see down there the eucalyptus trees, in the middle of this eucalyptus trees was running a beautiful spring. Till today it runs there. And there, in the midst of this spring, there was a vineyard. And the vineyard belonged not to the king, Ahab, but to a man called Naboth the Jezreelite. Now, when we've, we've heard now the story, we could talk about so many different things. I want to mention one thing. And this thing is so important. This thing is called inheritance. What is the law of inheritance? When the king Ahab came to Naboth and he told him, right, give me your field. What actually, and I will pay you and so on. What actually were the words of Naboth? The Lord forbid me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. You see, the Lord forbid. It's not something that I can discuss even. It's not something that it depends on me. The Lord forbids. Why he said it? I want to, to just share with you a little bit about inheritance. Look, God says very clear in the book of Numbers chapter 26. And he says, when you come to the land and you will inherit. Remember, they were still in the desert wandering right in Sinai. When you will come and inherit the land, it says this will be the, the system. To a large tribe, you shall give a large inheritance. And to a small tribe, you shall give a smaller inheritance. Each shall be given its inheritance according to those who were numbered of them. So first of all, we see there are rules in the inheritance. And just the next chapter 27, we have a story that goes through other six chapters in the Bible. What to do with inheritance that belongs to a man, and the man died, and he doesn't have children, boys, but only girls. What to do? Now, these girls are called the daughters of Tseloth Had. I want to tell you, the story is about a man called Tzlofchad. And this man was found on Shabbat, getting out of the camp in the desert, collecting trees to make fire. He was caught. The moment he was caught, they brought him to Moses. 
And Moses brought him to the Lord. What to do with this man that was caught cutting wood on Shabbat, on the sabbatical, on Sabbath, right? And then what God said, this man should be stoned. Now look, this man was stoned. But here we can find later on five girls, daughters of Tzlofchad, and they come to Moses and say, look, our father died because of his sin. He, was not, he didn't take part in the rebellion of Datan or Aviram against Moses. No. Look, he, they confess. He died because of his sin. But we, five daughters, why we should lose our inheritance? We did no wrong. He died because of his sin. And again, Moses came to the Lord and asked him, what will be done with these girls? And there came the word of God, so important, so clear. They are right, the daughters of Tzlofchad. They should get inheritance. And look what is the rule. They should marry to other people in their tribe, which was Manasseh, and they will get inheritance because they don't want them. They should not lose their inheritance, but it should stay in their tribe. And then five times on, we find these daughters all the way talking to Joshua, even after they came to the land. By the way, they got a beautiful inheritance. One of the first capital of Israel was Tirzah, which is called by one of the daughters. But I want now to go to see even more clear the rule of God. And I'm going to Ezekiel 46. Remember, we talk about a millennial, the millennial time, when all the a tribes will get their inheritance. Look what God says in Ezekiel 46, verse 18. Moreover, the prince shall not take any of the people's inheritance by evicting them from their property. He shall provide an inheritance for his sons from his own property so that none of my people may be scattered from his property. I think more clear than this it cannot be, right? And on this statement, Navot is standing. When he said to Ahab, I am not allowed by God to sell my inheritance. It's not my inheritance. It's my forefathers. It's God's inheritance. Now, look how a lie grows. That's what he told Navot. I'm not allowed by God. But how Ahab, King Ahab, how he, he dismissed, how he, how he changed the words of Navot, look so ugly. Because when he saw his wife, what he, tell, he told her, Navot told me, I will not give you my vineyard. This is not, this is not what Navot tell, told him. But again, like a little child, you know, that plays with games. And his friend took his games. King of Israel, I will not give you my vineyard. That's what he told me. Now, his wife, she got crazy. What is the meaning he will not give you his vineyard? And she is working very hard to give him a vineyard. Look, I don't blame him, her so much in this story. Of course, she's terrible. But look, the way that Ahav said he cheated her even. And that's why later on, look what the people blamed Navot. They said, Navot has blasphemed God and the king. You see? They don't mention the inheritance. And what she says, Jezebel to her husband, Arise, the possession of the vineyard of Navot, the Israelite, which he refused to give you for money. Go take it. What I wanted to show in this Story, just one thing. What is the meaning of inheritance and how much we have inheritance in the kingdom of heaven? Nobody will take this inheritance for us. Jesus gave his blood in order that we will get inheritance, not less than this. You see, we're not following him just to be to suffer in this world. We are following him to our inheritance. And he will net let nobody touch this inheritance 
till we will come and be with him there in heaven one day.